Two weeks ago, a woman dropped her children off at school, took her dog for a walk and then simply vanished without a trace. Where is Nicola Bully? Good evening. It is a mystery that has left a family traumatised. Two young children desperate to know where their mum is and millions asking the same question. What happened to Nicola Bully? There's been so much speculation over the past 14 days. Tonight, we aim to separate fact from theory. In this special programme, we'll hear at length from Nicola's partner, Paul. He tells us more about the woman he loves, how agonising the past two weeks have been for him and his family, how they're trying to cope and how he is still holding on to hope. What we're going through now is like unprecedented hell. Personally, I'm 100% convinced it's not the river. That's my opinion. We just have to find her. In the studio with us tonight, the underwater search specialist called in by the family to scour that river. He's also convinced Nicola is not there. We'll have the latest on the investigation, live from St Michael's on Wire, the Lancashire village where Nicola was last seen. Later, we'll be talking to Nicola's friend, Emma White. And also here in the studio, two of Britain's most high-profile police experts. We're going to start for you tonight, though, with the latest on the situation and that search for Nicola Bully. Five News correspondent Peter Lane is in St Michael's on wire for us this evening. Peter, good to talk to you. Let's start by running us through what we know. What's happened today? Yeah, hi, Dan. Well, the search continues. Boats have been back on the river here, and tonight police have said they are keeping an open mind, looking at all potential scenarios. Now, when Nicola first disappeared, of course, people assumed there'd be a logical explanation, that she was bound to turn up. But then hours became days and now weeks, with still no clues, no answers. <laughs> To hear her voice, Nicola's family have only the videos they filmed in happier times. And time matters. It's now two weeks since she disappeared while walking their pet dog, Willow. This, the last image of Nicola setting off with Willow from the house that morning. We know she was seen near the river. We know her phone was discovered on this bench, still dialed in to a work conference call with Willow found nearby. But that's where everything stops, where her once normal routine turns into a mystery. For those closest to Nicola, the past fortnight has taken its toll. Just this roller coaster of torture, despair. We've got to frustration now. The frustration is we are two weeks on. We have no news, we don't know anything. So we are telling the truth to the children. We literally know nothing. Back on the water today, the search continued. Police still convinced Nicola is in the river, with, they say, nothing to suggest a criminal element. If this story doesn't end in the river, where does it take us? Nicola could have walked away from this area using a number of different routes, but so far there's no evidence of her leaving here, either alone or with someone else. It is getting harder as time goes on. I think, you know, it's the not knowing. It's not knowing, is she somewhere scared? Is she safe? Is she... It's the not knowing, you know. We just desperately want to know where she is and the, the goal is to have a home and to have her safe with a family. The river here hasn't changed. This peaceful spot hasn't changed. But for one family and the community around them, nothing feels the same. Well, that's Peter Lane reporting for us this evening. And we've spoken to Lancashire Police about what you should do if you think you might be able to help this evening. They've told us anyone who might have information or perhaps even phone footage, which they think is relevant, should call 101 and say they want to talk about the Nicola Bully investigation. For any immediate sightings, please call 999. That's the message from Lancashire Police. And we'll remind you of those numbers throughout the programme. But earlier today, I spent a couple of hours with Paul Ansell. That's Nicola's partner. I wasn't entirely sure how long the interview would last or what Paul would feel like he wanted to say, but he was prepared to talk at such length that we've decided to show the interview in sections 
throughout the programme. Today is, is two weeks since Nicky went missing. This might be a stupid question to start with, but how are you doing? What's life been like for the last two weeks? Um, hell. I am still here, obviously. My main focus is, is the children, always has been. So that's my focus that gets me through. Um, but, you know, the, the, I think when you're going through something like this, you can't, you can't put it into words. I can't say how I'm doing. I can't really explain it because it's not your every average mm. every day of the you know thing you know, nobody knows really anybody who's ever gone through anything like this who knows anybody who knows anybody so it's just an Im impossible situation for everybody you know involved it's I think that's the thing because it's hard to imagine what you're going through can you even put it into words for us the, the sort of emotions that you're feeling at the moment Anger, utter frustration, confusion, disbelief, surrealism. Nothing feels real. I was going to ask you that. It just it, what it feels like you're living someone else's life, or how does it how does it feel? It don't, just doesn't feel real. Yeah, if it's in the Truman Show, well, I feel like I'm in the Truman Show. Like, it, I honestly believe I'm going to wake up. At, at any moment. Um, yeah, it's just... I was just talking to Louise before, you know, um, Nicky's sister, and we both just say the same thing every day. Just, how are we even in this? You know, we're good people. We are good people. We try to live the best life that we can, do, do the right thing by everybody. Um, you appreciate the small things. You know what I mean? It, it just this is the kind of thing that you see on the telly in in dramas um, and stuff like that. You said that your main priority was the girls. Can I ask you how they're doing? Because you know you're missing the woman that you love, but they're missing their mum, and mm. the questions they must be asking you are, are heartbreaking at the moment. Yeah, it's impossible. Um, uh, Anyone, any, well, any parent knows, you know, that um, all you want to do is is make everything better for your children, isn't it? You know, whenever they're worried or they're, or, or they're scared or, or anything like that, you just, you want to make it better for them. And I can't, you know, I can't do that. Um, so all I, all I can do is as strong as I can so that they don't see the level of like worry mm. on, on my face um, reassure them as much as I can with you know with what what we know which isn't much and, and then I, and then I try and distract them you know so so that they're so that their mind's not focused on it I find that's the best way of doing it. They need hope. Yeah. And you've got to hold on to that as, as tightly as you can. Every time they ask you where mummy is, how, how do you... How does, how does anybody even convey that to when you're going through it as well? Again, it's just another... It's just an impossible situation. The only thing... The only thing that I can do is tell them that everybody is looking for mummy. The best people, like, in the world are looking for mummy. Mm. Um, just, just to give them that, you know, that that level of hope that that they can understand that everything that we're that can can be done to find mummy is being done. I think for the vast majority of people watching on, Nikki is a face on a poster at the moment. Tell us a bit about her. You know, what's she like? She is um, fun. She is loving. She is, if you're friends with her, she is the, the most loyal friend that you could ever have. You know, she, 
There's what with Nikki, what you see is what you get. There's no hidden. Nothing's hidden. You know, it's all that's that's her, and she she is an exceptional mum, and she absolutely, you know, adores our girls. It goes above and beyond. I, I was saying, saying to Emma the other day, I don't, I don't think that she's been away from them, like, for more than, like, one or two nights, you know, since, since you know, we've had, you know, our eldest. And yeah. she, uh, yeah, she, um, she's a, a pillar of strength, you know, to, to, our, to our family. And uh, without her... You know, the, the hole is, you know, bigger than you could possibly imagine. Well, after the break, we'll hear more from that heartbreaking interview with Paul Ansel, that's Nicola's partner. And our studio guests will also look at Nicola's last known movements. See you in a moment. Welcome back to our special programme looking at the disappearance of Nicola Bully, the 45-year-old mother of two who vanished two weeks ago. Now, her partner, Paul, talked to me earlier today. We're showing his interview throughout the programme for you tonight. He spoke in depth about the day Nicola went missing. Can I ask you to take us back to two weeks today, mm. um, that morning of Friday, the, the 27th of January? Yeah. Was it a normal morning like, like any other? Yeah, totally normal. Um... So the only difference that morning was, uh, you know, usually, you know, when you've got children, getting up on a school day, mm. you know, you probably know yourself, is just mayhem, isn't it? Yeah, carnage, yeah. Yeah, absolute <laughs> carnage. So the only difference on that morning two weeks ago was that there wasn't a lot of rushing. I came down and a lot of stuff was, was already done. It was, um, you know, the girls were having a breakfast and everything was pretty much ready to go. I came down... Nikki went upstairs to get ready. Um, and then, you know, the routine is basically if, if Nikki's taking the girls and Willow, um, when I hear her come down, I'll, I'll get them in the car, get them strapped in, get, the, get Willow in the boot and all that. And uh, Nikki comes out, give her the keys and, and off they go. It's a well-oiled machine normally. And sometimes yeah. you walk the dog and take the kids to school and, and on that morning it was Nikki's job. Yeah, and then if it's my job, usually the, the roles are, are reversed. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, again, it was just nothing out of the ordinary. Everything was normal, you know. Because my, my working hours, because I, I work for a US firm, so my hours are, are like six hours behind uh, UK time. So I don't usually start work till a bit later in the morning. So um, when Nikki takes the girls to school, I then know that I've got like an hour to myself on that morning when she takes them. So I always quite look forward to that, you know, because I, I wave them off and, yeah. and then I go in the house and I put the kettle on, make a cup of tea and I think, right, I've got an hour. Bit, bit to... of peace. So at what point are you thinking something's not right here? At w w when did it feel, where's Nikki? What, 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 at what point did that kick in? So she's usually back like quarter to ten average, ten o'clock, uh, you know, mm. at a push. So I'd, I'd gone up into the office at ten thinking that she'll be back in a minute. Um, so I logged on. I was just going through some emails and stuff, you know, setting my day up. Mm. And it got to, say, quarter past ten. And that's when I thought, you know, she's later than usual. But I still wasn't, like, particularly would because she has come back at quarter past twenty past ten sometimes. Like, she might just get talk, might talking to Emma yeah. or, or another mum. a friend mom. on a dog walk, yeah. Yeah, yeah, or anybody. So... You know, it's not often, but she has she has got back at about quarter past ten, twenty past ten. So again, I wasn't like massively concerned or anything. Um, then it got to half past ten, and that's when I thought, you know, she's, you know, quite quite late now, more late than usual. So I tried ringing her phone, and there was no answer. I tried ringing her on WhatsApp, and again there was no answer. I tried the mobile again, and no answer, so I couldn't get it. I started to get a bit, a bit panicky, I think. Mm. So that's when I thought, right, I'm going to have to 
go down there and see if she's all right, you know, see if if I can see the car or, or, you know, see what's going on. But I still expected that I'd just get there and just, oh, there she is, you know. So um, I go to the gym on a Friday, Friday lunchtime. So I quickly got my gym stuff on because I just thought basically I'm going to go out, find her, come home, do a bit of work. Carry on, yeah. Yeah, lunchtime, go to the gym. We're going to leave... And then the phone rang, and it was um, it was the school, and it was the receptionist at school, and she said, "Mr. Ansell, it's a bit of a weird one." Yeah, hello. So it's a bit it's a bit of a weird one, but we found um, Willow and Nicola's Nicky's phone on on the bench, and the harness halfway down the embankment on the floor. So. You're, I was, you're, wary, you're already worried at this point. Yeah, because yeah. I'm, I'm just about to leave. So right. I've got my gym stuff on. I'm about to leave thinking that I'm going to see her, mm. you know, pass her, get there and find her. Then I get that call. And in, in an instant, it's like your whole... Of course. Because I knew straight away that it wasn't normal. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, because I said, well, where is she? And like, well, they can't find her. So I also know that she would never in a million years leave Willow. Like, Willow is like our third child. Mm. So I know, like, she'd never... Like, the fact that Willow's just in the field on her own, off the lead, obviously extremely concerning. Mm. So, obviously, I'll, you know, I'm just in a mad panic then, you know, because it's... I got hit by that weird... It's like, it's like your world just drops out. Because you know something's weird has happened, um, so I got in the car, drove down there, ran down the river to where the bench is. Somebody had Willow, and obviously there was a few of the dog walkers there and stuff like that. Mm. Handed me Willow, handed me Nicky's phone. I still expected, obviously, to just have a, a look around and well, there she is, or, or there she is. So you know, we're all looking. I'm, I'm like walking off into the field that way, like looking around the corners. Looking over the hedge, looking over the stile, and you nothing. know, nothing, nothing. But I'd rung nine 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 on the way because I obviously knew something was 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 wrong. So the police rang me then while I was at the bench and said, "Look, you've you've got to get home because um, the police are going to be coming to your house. We need somebody at your house. You get home. The police are on the way there." So I'd rung the police at like I think about ten to eleven. And they were they were there, like, they got there at 25 past. So they were there, you know, really, really quick. Mm. Um, so I then, you know, I'd gone home then, taken Willow back. Um, police officer would come to the house. And, you know, although I was, like, obviously extremely worried and concerned, I still expected at any second to just go, oh, we found her, you know, mm. we've, we've found her here or, or, or whatever... Um, and and that yeah, I mean that never happened. Like that was just the, the day. Then just you know, just spiraled, and end of the day came, and uh, no answers. Here we are, you know, two weeks later. We'll hear more from Paul Ansell in a moment. That was his recollection of the day Nicola went missing. Let's look in a bit more detail about what we know about that Friday. We're going to start the clock at 8.26 on January the 27th. Nicola was captured by her ring doorbell camera. Here she is on the driveway of her home in Inskip. You can clearly see she's dressed in that heavy outdoor clothing, including the knee-length quilted coat with the hood. Her hair is tied up in a ponytail and in the boot of the car there is Willow the dog. It was moments after that that she left her home with her two young daughters and Willow. She did the normal school run, just over 10 minutes, and at 8.40 she dropped off the children in St Michael's on wire and at that point she had a brief conversation with another parent. Three minutes later, and follow the white line as Nicola walks along the path by the river wire towards a bench and into the lower field. At roughly 8.47, a dog walker, someone who knows Nicola, saw her walking around that lower field with Willow. The two dogs had a bit of fun with each other before the witness left that field via the river path. The time is now 8.53 and Nicola sends an email to her boss. A few minutes later, she sent a message to a friend. 
At one minute past nine, she logs on to that Teams call. And then approximately at 9.10, a witness, somebody again who knows Nicola, saw her this time in the upper field again with Willow the dog. By 9.20, a trace of telephone records has shown that her phone was back in that area around the bench. And at 9.30, the team call ends, but Nicola stays logged on. 9.33, Nicola's mobile phone and Willow were found by that bench near the river by another dog walker. It wasn't then until 10.45 that Nicola's daughter's primary school was notified. They contacted Paul Ansell. He told us about that in the interview. And it was just before 11 o'clock, almost two hours after the last confirmed sighting of Nicola, that the police are then called. We also know now that there are some blind spots in the park not covered by CCTV. And as Peter Lane explained to us earlier, police have extended the search along the river, further downstream, towards Estuary and out towards Morecambe Bay. The police still say they have an open mind about the case, but there's nothing to suggest anything untoward or third-party involvement. This is what they said earlier this week. We remain fully open to any information, any information that is credible and factual to try and trace Nicola and bring answers for her family. But it does remain our belief that Nicola sadly fell into the river and that this is a missing person inquiry. We would ask that people in the wider community, particularly on social media and online, do not speculate as to what may have happened to Nicola. This is particularly hurtful to her family, to her children, to her partner Paul, her parents, her sister and her friends. So that was a police speaking a little earlier this week. Let's introduce you to our guests this evening for the first time. Peter Folding, good evening to you. He's the underwater specialist who uh, the family asked to search for Nicola. Great to have you on the programme. Also here, former Met Police Chief Superintendent Palm Sandu is with us tonight. And Mark Williams-Thomas, a former detective turned investigative journalist. I know you've been listening with, with great care and attention to what Paul has had to say this evening, but... Mark, on, on the, specifically on the evidence and that, that line of evidence we've just seen and that timeline, the significance of the phone, because this has been crucial to the case, so many questions about it, why was, why was it still logging to that team's call um, when it was still on, on the bench? How important has that been and will that continue to be for the case? Yeah, the phone is really important. What I'm struggling with is this whole strategy that the police have. Why are they not here? We last heard from them two days ago. They haven't responded to you to come on the show. This is now a massive, massive investigation in terms of the public profile. People are following this. It's not about giving daily update dates in everything you're doing, but it's about filling the void. Mm. She talks in terms of people, the public, having guesses. Come out and talk to the public every day through the media and explain what's going on. We shouldn't be sat here. The police should be sat here working with you in a Crime Watch style programme to be able to appeal for information. Mm. And that mobile phone is crucial, but we mustn't be detracted from the wider evidence. That mobile phone has probably played out now. We know that it was on the bench. They've secured as much evidence as they can from that mobile phone through the you know, technology that's mm. now available. What they now need to do is what I would refer to you know, feet on the ground. They now need to start looking at the wider area, not just focused in relation to the the river. We know their hypothesis is the river, but actually there are three aspects here, which is either river, she walks off, or someone takes her. Those are your three hypotheses, not just the water. And it's all well and good to say, do you know what, actually, we'll take any information. What they should have said from a media strategy is that we have a number of working hypotheses and we're focused on this. I mean, certainly what they need to do is to be very broad. The senior command course tells you very clearly, don't be fixated on one element because you'll look to in, provide in that fairness, evidence. In fairness, they have said today that they've got a they've got an open mind in response to what Paul has said, in response to that interview today. What about the CCTV side of this, Palm? Again, that's, that was a, a black spot, but surely that's been searched from start to finish. Well, over the last two weeks, the police officers will have done, and I know that they will have done this, 
They will have searched all of the CCTV that was available to them. They'll have also asked for dash cam videos, ring doorbells, anything like that. But what we've got to remember is that there were something like 700 vehicles that mm. passed through the village mm. on that morning. So they've made an appeal to those 700 drivers to say, can you check your dash cam? Can, have, has anybody got any mobile phone um, camera footage that we can use? So although they've focused on one particular yeah. hypothesis, they will, they will still have that open mind and they will still be looking at other avenues that they could exhaust and look at before they make any final decisions. And that's what's supposed to happen. As a senior investigating officer, and especially on a missing persons case, mm. I'm absolutely convinced that will have been done and will be carrying on. Because as far as we know, there's, there's about a team of 40 or 50 officers that are dedicated to this investigation and they've had thousands of pieces of information from the public as well as leads that they can actually follow up. And a lot of that information, what they've been looking at, is, is in the river. How does that complicate the, the evidence gathering? Well, underwater search, Dan, is, is always difficult. But looking for bodies actually is quite straightforward. You know, it's we as divers recover about 10 victims a year and plus suicide victims. It's just follow a line. You, you run along the bottom with a line feeling around until, you, unfortunately, you touch the, the, the person. Um, our, ours is speeded up with high-frequency side-scan sonar so we can scan a large lake in a day, no problem, and locate the victim. OK, and, and, and just briefly, 170,000 people go missing every single year, Mark. Why do, why do you think there's so much focus on, on, on this case? Yeah, I mean, thousands go missing. Overwhelmingly, they return. They return very quickly, but there are some, that obviously, that don't. I've been contacted this week by people who are saying to me, will you help me with my family? Mm. Why are these cases not being featured? What we've got to be very clear of is there are certain cases which attract more media attention. Ethnicity, sexuality of the individual, male, female, and also their upbringing, you know, mm. if they're middle class. There are certain people who fulfil the criteria and they get much more publicity. Don't forget, it's the public that will solve this. The police this will pull the jigsaw okay. puzzle together, but it is a public that will solve it. Uh, once again, here are the numbers for you uh, to call if you think you can help. We have invited Lancashire Police on the programme tonight. They declined that invitation, but they have said you can call 101 and uh, say you believe you have information about the Nicola Bully investigation. Uh, for immediate sightings, please call 999. Uh, we are going to take a break for you now. In a few minutes, you'll hear Paul Ansell again. That's Nicola's partner. Tell us why he is convinced the answer to this terrible story does not lie in the river. Welcome back. Nicola Bully and Paul Ansell have been together for 12 years and they have two young daughters. He simply cannot fathom how or why she went missing. His life is currently in limbo, but he remains both desperate and determined to find the truth. What do you think might have happened? We, we've always tried to keep all options open because we don't want to shut down any avenue. We have, we've always been very careful that we don't want to say, oh, we think it's that, and then push that when it might not be. Mm. Um, the most obvious thing, of course, has always been the river. Um, it's always been my gut instinct and, 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 and her sister's and and family that um, that isn't the case. Mm. Extensive um, searching, you know, is probably well aware of gone, has gone on in that river. I mean, they, they were in there, you know, I mean, I, I have to categorically say I cannot fault the police in any of this. They, they have been incredible. And the relationship that, that we have working on this is still, is very, very strong, it's very good. Um, so that this isn't any uh, criticism of them at all. I just want to make that. I want to make that clear. Uh, but the fact that they were in the divers and underwater rescue team and 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 all that were in that river on that on the day, and um, thankfully found absolutely nothing um, in the part where you would, I guess, have to presume mm. is her last lo known location. If you if you take all those things into account, of the unlikeliness mm. of it, you know, you would have to sort of say that really the, the, the river isn't, isn't what happened. And so we always felt that the mobile phone and the harness 
and everything. It could it could possibly be a decoy. Um, again, I'm, we don't have evidence. No, but these we, are things that you yeah. naturally would think about because you know the the team's call was still active yeah. at the time, wasn't it? And the Willow's harness is on the on the floor, and you know, I'm, I'm sure these are things that constantly you're thinking about. Yeah, yeah, of course it is. Of course it is. I mean, like the only thing we're bothered about is finding her. Like there's. Mm. Nothing else matters. That's the only thing that we're bothered about. It's just finding her. So, you know, it's um, of course you're going to be thinking this, mm. these these things. And so, the more searching of the river that went on, the more confident we were that it wasn't the river. Mm. You know, especially things like, again, you know, it's not nice talking about it, but at the same time, we've taken hope from it, the fact that um, no item of clothing or anything has been found anywhere where you would have thought something, you know, would have... Something might have been found, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and, 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 and absolutely nothing. So, for me... Personally, and again, this is just my opinion. Yeah. I'm personally, I'm a hundred percent convinced it's not the river. That's my opinion. And I suppose the question after that is, what then? And I, well, this and the difficulty is you allowing your mind to think where she might be and what's happened to her, which is is horrible as well. I imagine. Yeah, it's it, it's horrendous because. You, you, people don't just vanish into thin air. It's absolutely impossible. So something has happened. Something has happened. Find out what it is. Find out what it is. There has to be a way to find out what happened. There has to be. You cannot, you cannot walk your dog down a river and just vanish into thin air. Something, something happened that day. Something. Find out find out what it is and, and my my plea now is personally i want every house every garage every outbuilding the land scrutinized i want it all searched i want it all scrutinized every piece of it and i'm very, i'm not going to you're not going to appease me with anything else that that is what i want to happen because for something to have happened there, it's, it's not many... You, you would only know that area by local people. It's a local area. I, we've walked down there for years, and I mean years. You see the same faces every single day. And on the very odd occasion when you see somebody that, you know, you, you don't know, they, st they stand out like a sore thumb. And I think that's an important point to make because there might be some people watching this thinking why are you doing this why are you yeah. talking to us and the reason you're doing that i don't want to put words in your mouth is because you feel that somebody out there knows something and yeah that's the appeal that you're trying to make yeah definitely definitely and i'm just pleading with with them just please anything anything no matter how tiny just please just come forward with it please because that is th that could be the key mm. to finding her and as a family we're not bothered about anything else like there's nothing else the only thing is we just have to find her and that's pretty clear isn't it that's why paul wanted to give us that interview and um, you heard him there say he's 100 percent certain nicola is not in the river let's bring in peter folding who has been searching that river yeah. um for the family do you share that conclusion you think she's the body's not in there well we come in 10 days after dan um i wasn't there on the initial search it was searched thoroughly by police divers on the day we've since um looked at it and down the bottom of the bank the water's about that deep onto rocks mm. on the day it was 12 inches higher 
so it was about two foot. If Nicola had slid down the bank, she would have landed on stones and she could have literally stood up. It's about three and a half metres in the deep, in the in the middle. Mm. But that's my my theory. It's very. It's, this is a really odd one. Okay, because I'm, I'm sure conditions make a difference, don't they? So you talked a bit about the depth there, but yeah. it, the the speed of the flow, all those sort of things, can have a massive impact on on something. Absolutely, it would take a lot of flood water to move a body fast down the river on the day. Let's face it. That day, we normally find people within about an hour, and they haven't gone far when they first drowned. To get right the way round the bo- corner of past obstacles, that would that would take some hell of a movement of water. And on the day, the family said the water was hardly moving. Mm. I threw a stick in yesterday and it stayed there for 20 minutes. And we've got some uh, sonar images which we're going to show you in a moment. Uh, you sent these through to us. When we see those, can you explain the sorts of things that you're looking for when you're yeah. searching at the, at the bottom of a riverbed? Absolutely. Let's have a look at those pictures if we can. So what we're seeing there is rocks on the bottom. A body would stand out. It would look like a body. That's nice. You can see sticks there laying on the bottom. You can see rocks. And and that's the width of the river. And then we go up the other side, so we, we catch that centre line, so we cross out, we cross lap. If we find something, we measure it. But a body, to me, on most of my searches, does look like a body. You can see it quite clear and measure, uh, measure it. And... and and that's how good it is. I mean, we can scan out to 30 metres either side to search a river. And the police are now looking a lot further down the river, as, as uh, Peter Lane was explaining, out towards yeah. Morecambe Bay. That's particularly difficult because it's fully tidal and, and, and the water comes in. Every six hours it goes out. So it's moving constantly. Mm. So a chance of a body being in that area in the tidal part, I mean, sometimes it'll wash in. Some, we had a sheep in Kent what washed in and stayed there for two weeks. Palm, how does it affect a, a major investigation like this when you've got a, a difference of opinion a, about a, a major part of it like this where, you know, Peter and, and Paul are saying Nicola's not in the river but the police have centred their investigation on that for, for most of the two weeks? This is a really complex case and it is very difficult for police to manage it because they have no evidence. There's no evidence to say that she is in the water but there's no evidence to say that she's left the area either. So it is being treated as a missing person inquiry, which means that all scenarios should be open and all of them should still be examined and looked at. So it is difficult, but I think that one of the most important parts of this one is to keep the family and the community on side and on, you know, on point to help with that inquiry. Because where there is no evidence, where there is no CCTV or anything else to go on, it is, as, as we've said before, it is the public who are going to help to solve this crime. If it is a crime. Yeah, I know Paul is speaking to the liaison officers every single day and he's getting regularly briefed by the police as well. It is extraordinary, though, isn't it, in a case like this, to be two weeks mm. into this investigation with no single piece of evidence that's come to light in those... Yeah, two weeks, two weeks today. I mean, I'm surprised they didn't do road checks this morning. You know, people are creatures of habit, so exactly the same time two weeks later, I'd have done it a week later, you had to run, run a roadblock, road checks, and just seen who's coming. You'll be surprised the amount of people who still won't know about this case. They may live in the community, they don't follow the news in a normal fashion, so they might not know about it. You know, just going back to that point of the police, you know, why have they given a 101 telephone number? Do you know how difficult it is to get through on 101 and the delay? Let's give it a let's give a specific number. And I'd I'd urge you know the chief constable or somebody just get a hold of this. Start to realise actually you need the public on side. You need to start giving clear messages. You know sometimes the information being given by Superintendent mm-hmm. Riley has been confusing. We need to go back to the beginning and start again. Okay, we're going to take a break for you now. Uh, In a moment, we'll speak to one of Nicola's best friends who's watching the programme tonight. And Paul will tell us why he refuses to give up on hope. Don't go away. Welcome back. Now, we know it's been a terrible two weeks for everyone in St Michael's on Wye, and yet one of the most heartwarming aspects of this story is the way the entire community have rallied round. Nicola's friends, of course, but also people who don't even know her, uh, who've been shocked and saddened and simply want to help. Let's speak now to Emma White, who is one of Nicola's best friends, who's speaking to us tonight from her home in Lancashire. Emma, thank you so much for spending a bit of time with us this evening. Can I ask you, what, what have the past two weeks been like for you? You can't put into words the, the roller coaster we've been on the past two weeks. It's the heartache, the torture, the disbelief washed down with this immense hope. And then we've got this drive and focus to bring Nikki home. And then we've had to put emotions aside, being that support for Paul and the girls and my family, and just putting that brave face on, telling them everything's all right, but equally being honest with them 
knowing that Nikki is missing and, and the girl's mummy is missing, no two days has been the same, no two hours has been the same, and just waiting for that good news and keeping that hope at the forefront of our minds. We've heard a lot from uh, Paul tonight, uh, Nikki's partner, and he's told us a lot about the Nicola that he loves. What about the Nicola that you know so well? Yeah, I think just from seeing her face out there, she's, she's touched the nation, hasn't she? And everything that you see, and a little bit more, is what she is inside. She's beautiful, she's caring, she's thoughtful, she's kind, she's funny, she's loving, the most loyal friend. She's the stuff that dreams are made of, and we've laughed, we've cried, everyone in between. And then you take Nick, Nikki's lovely, amazing qualities, you add Paul's in there, and then we've got these two little human beings that we have to do everything to bring Nikki home and, and bring their mummy home for them. I know that you and many other people have put everything on hold over the past fortnight, helping the family and, and helping the, the police as well. The community response has been incredible. I was up in St Michael's on Wire today. There's people everywhere on street corners holding up posters of, of, of Nikki everywhere. H has that struck you? I know you're a close-knit community anyway. Yeah, we are a close-knit community, but that community near and far has united. Oh, it's been fundamental in raising the profile of Nikki's disappearance, generating those lines of inquiry. What I cannot stress enough is please keep those lines of inquiry, please keep them factual. Don't clog that 101 line that we really need to, to have that factual information come through to give the police lines of inquiry. Even the locals with all the disruption they've had on the village, they've been so supportive. We've all got the end goal to bring Nikki home. Then we've got Peter and the SGI group offering their time and expertise to cement the great work that the police have done. And then the acts of kindness from mm. everybody is just unimaginable. And I'd personally like to thank every single one of you, family, friends, strangers. It's the simple act of kindness that have made the biggest difference. Um, and the strength that it's given me to then be able to be, I heard in Paul's interview, that pillar of support. Mm. With people supporting me, we've been able to support Paul and the girls, and I cannot thank everybody enough. And we need to bring Paul and Gert and the girls there rock home mm. to bring Nikki home. Well, Emma, I know you do an incredible job, and it's very much appreciated by Paul and, and many others there uh, in the village. Thank you for your time tonight. Do take care of yourself. Really appreciate you speaking to us Thank live so on the programme. And let's bring in our, our studio guests who are listening in to what Emma has to say there. And, and Palm, I know you have personal experience, don't you, of how important a local community can be in a case like this? I think that's one of the most important parts of this investigation because it is the local community who may have the answers to solving this issue. They may have a small bit of information that if they share it, that might help. But even the people who are turning up to assist, who are walking the riverbank, they are part of that community and they are trying to help. Mm. And in addition to that, the police have done an incredible job here because of the amount of CCTV, the amount of cars that have gone through that area, the amount of evidence that they've, or intelligence they've been given that they're still chasing up. So, you know, everybody is working really hard. It's just that little extra that's needed now. And the other element which we haven't really touched on, which Paul does mention in the final part of our interview to come, is that sort of social media sleuths side of this, which can confuse an investigation and it's people looking for their own little moment in the spotlight. Yeah, I mean, all major investigations, particularly nowadays, when they attract huge media attention, means that a lot of information is incoming. And what the police have to do is obviously sift every piece of that information. They have a triage process to be able to determine those that require urgent action. And that slows down the whole process. I've been very critical of the police in certain ways, but it is important to say that behind the scenes, they are doing a very good job. They're, they're analysing the information. I think what they've got wrong is their communication process has let them down massively. But there are people out there and let's be really clear to those individuals is that it doesn't help in any way to start speculating mm. about individuals whether or not they're involved you know we've heard very clearly from Paul tonight you've spoken to him he's talking from the heart he's not involved okay um time for another break when we come back in the studio in the final part of our interview with Paul he'll explain how Nicola is inspiring him to never give up on the hope that they can be a family once again we'll see you in a moment Welcome back to the final part of this special programme. Nicola Bully's partner told me earlier today that hope is still strong, both within him and his family. He remains adamant tonight that Nicola would never give up on them. So how can they give up on her? You've told us a bit about um, who Nicky is. Was she ever the sort of person who might 
go away for a, a night or leave for a few days. You know what I mean? It's about as far out of character as you could get. You know, I truly mean that. Like, even as a couple, um, on the odd occasion, if we ever do have a night away from the girls, because mm. the girls are our world. Like, mm. we go out for meals, the girls come with us. Um, our Your whole, family. Yeah. yeah, yeah, everything that we do is... Um, the girls are in it, they're involved in it. Um, and that's, that feels right. You know, that's how we love it. We love, we love our little family, we love our world. And your gorgeous dog Willow's been spending a bit of time with us as well. And it's also that thing that Willow may well have seen. I know, I know. To Nikki. I know, and, and, and that's another layer of, of, of frustration and, and hell to it, you know. You've, it's a hellish situation with the layer of hell that no, not knowing what's happened yet and then also having Willow who probably does know mm. what happened um, but she can't she can't tell us can she and she's a very sensitive dog mm. uh, I did take her back there first thing on the uh, on the Saturday, uh, the, the day after. The next day, well, The next day, yeah, I took her back there first How thing. did she react to that then? Well, I was, obviously I was praying and hoping that what, once we got to the gate that um, she would do something different, you know, just to give... Take you somewhere. Yeah, yeah, just give some, some sign of some kind. But she, bless her, she just went through the gate like any other normal day and ran into the field and looked at me excited that she was there for a walk. I was saying to her, where's mummy, where's mummy, you know. And she was just looking at me like, you know, let's go for a walk. Mm. There's been a lot of publicity around um, Nikki's disappearance, hasn't there? And um, I suppose you are one of those stories that is very much talked about on social media at the moment. Uh, I'm, I, I don't know whether you've read the stories, the accusations, all the, all the theories that are out there. Does that upset you, or are you happy that people are talking about and trying to find a solution? It would be upsetting, of course, if I let myself read it all. Don't get me wrong, I have seen some stuff. Most people have been amazing. Yeah. You know, you're always, go, you're always going to get that 2% of um, people that, for whatever reason, you know, say and, and do... Not very nice things, mm. but I don't want to give any energy to that. Like my energy is just finding Nikki. Um, I read one that said um, the, the police need to look at the partner, and I'm sort of like, well, yeah, that's the first thing that they do. Like, of course it is. Yeah. You know, like I knew that that would happen. You know, on the, on on the first day. And you, I, and I said, you expect that, don't you? Yeah. I expected that. I said to them, um, do it. And, and get that out of the way, and then focus on finding her. On finding her, and focus on the rest of it. So that's exactly what we did. You know, it was um, that was done, ruled out, obviously, um, and then move on. So, you know, whatever you know, people want to say, and uh, you know, if, if that's what they want to think, that's their business. It's not. It's not mine. But I know you've also been struck by the amazing response yeah. locally and you know just being here for for today yeah. everybody's talking about it everyone's asking how you are and the local community whether they're standing out on the street corner or putting posters up or just asking questions yeah. they are doing an, an amazing job yeah it's absolutely incredible like the heart it's it's heartwarming mm. it's given us an immense amount of strength and and it's kept that that hope so high um that we, we can't like we can't thank them enough. How are you keeping it? Is it is is that the kids? Is that your natural positivity? It's all of those things. Of course, it's the of course it's the children. Of mm. course, but I am naturally a positive person, and I believe that you get out of life what you put into life, mm. and that's that's how we are as a family. And so, what we're going through now is like unprecedented hell, but that hope. And that positivity in me is, is stronger than ever, and I'm never, ever going to let go. Nikki would never give up on us, ever. Hmm. She, she wouldn't give up on anybody. 
and we're not going to ever give up on her. Like, we're going to find her. We were talking earlier and you were saying that um, one of the plans you had was to get married during the, the pandemic, but you sort of, like many people, you had to abandon those plans. Is that something that you think, you know, when, when she's back, this is what we're doing? Yeah. It's, I'm um, far too laid back sometimes for my own good. But also my attitude is, ah, uh, you know, we'll get around to it. It'll be fine, it'll be fine. And uh, so we have, to, we have obviously spoken about, you know, marriage many times before. And then we had the children. Um, when your children are, you know, obviously, you know, little, it's, you know, all time consuming. And then as they uh, were growing up, we always said when they're a bit older, mm. you know, it'd be a nice time to do it. And they can be a part of it. They can, you know, be the bridesmaids and everything so that was always always the plan and so you know it's just now it's just now um you know it's it's something that we would have obviously you know spoken about it and, and moved forward with again but and and still will there is a chance isn't there that somehow she might be out there even even watching this if you could say something to her what would you say to nikki now just how much how much I love her how much us as a family love her and need her how well thought of how much her friends love her um, and need her back um, and we're never we're never going to be the same and, until until she is back mm. just come home are you going to be okay I will, as long as she, as long as she comes home. But, yeah, I, I have to be okay for the children. Um, but obviously, the hope, the hope inside me that that well, that she's going to come home. That I, I can't let myself, you know, think of anything else. Is it's, it isn't an option in my head. Um, we we deserve we deserve a happy ending to all of this. You know, uh, you can't you can't have this level of support, this level of love, and compassion and and hope and prayers without getting the reward from that. In my mind, that is impossible. You know, when you think of all the hope and everything and that's going out there it has it has to come back she ha and, and and that has to bring her home i really appreciate you talking to us i know it's impossibly difficult you've described your life at the minute as as a living hell i hope what you said makes a difference as well and i think everybody watching this will join me in saying that we all hope that nikki comes home and that she is safe and well and you can be back together. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Uh, once again, here are the numbers for you to call. If you think you can help, either call 101 and say you believe you have more information about the Nicky Bully investigation. For any immediate sightings, please call the well-known number 999. Um, I know we've all you know, been captivated by, by Paul and the words that he said tonight. Palm and Mark, you're both former police officers. Where do the police go from here? I think one of the main things they need to do is they need to keep talking to the press. They need to keep that story coming out there and be as transparent as you can, be as open as you can. Listen to the family. Paul has made some specific requests what he wants the police to do. Listen to him and do that. And then third thing, which is probably the biggest thing, is keep everything on the table. There are three options here. She went in the water... She disappeared herself off her own back or there was a third party. And let's be really clear, the mm. fact that there isn't any evidence to support a third party doesn't mean to say there isn't one. And Palm? In my view, the police have got to keep those options open and really throw themselves into that investigation. I know that they can get the answers and I know that working with the community together, they can give um, the closure to this family and they need that closure. And Peter, talk about the family. You spent a lot of time with the family, particularly with Paul over the last few days. He is clearly holding on to that hope with all he's got at the moment. Yeah, I spent two hours with him yesterday and, and what he needs. He, Paul needs some form of closure, one way or the other, and that's the only way for him. He's, he's a distressed man. I mean, he, I've, I've, he's in pieces. I've spent a lot of time with him.
but the, but the whole community are are behind him. And if they, we just hope for some good news. Every, some everyone is behind them. Everybody is. He's he's been cleared of everything. He's not involved in this. He's he's absolutely cleared. So everyone, please back Paul and not stop all this social media mm. rubbish. You know, he, he's a good man. Thank you very much for your time. It's been a real pleasure to spend the evening with you. Thank you. So, uh, Friday, January the 27th, should have been just another day, a day when Nicola Bully should have been simply dropped, her two young daughters off at school, taken her dog for a walk along the river, spoken to her colleagues and gone home. But it wasn't just another day. It was, in her partner's words, we've heard them tonight, the day when an unprecedented hell began. Nicola isn't just a face on a poster. She's a mum. She's a daughter. She is loved by her family and by her friends. They all want the answer to the question we began this programme with tonight. Where is Nicola Bully? Thank you for watching. <laughs>